Hi, Steve here from PhotomasteryClub.com and in this quick Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily replace a sky in a photo uh, with a sky from another photo. But before we actually start the tutorial, if you want to download the PSD file that I'm working on in this example, then there should be a link just below the video in the description uh, where you can do that. So click that link if you want to download the PSD file and try this out for yourself using these images as an example. But for now, let's crack on with the tutorial. So what we've got open at the moment, I've already loaded two images into this one document. And we've got each one as its own layer. On top, we've got the uh, the image where we're going to use the foreground from. So we've got this, uh, this sort of grass and then the path and a church up on the top. Underneath, we've got the image uh, where we're going to be using the sky from. And so what we want to do is be able to cut this sky out or isolate this sky and create a layer mask that is going to allow this uh, sky layer beneath to show through. So the first thing we need to do is uh, make our selection that we can create our layer mask from. Now we're quite lucky with this particular image because the uh, sky is so bright and so white that uh, you know it's going to be able to, or Photoshop's going to be able to do quite a good job just with the uh, quick selection tool. So I'm going to select that and I'm just going to draw around here in the sky and we'll see the selection, we'll see the marching ants have kind of uh, clung on to the edge of the image here around the sky, around the church and that's not going to be a perfect selection but it's close enough for now so what we need to do next is use this selection to create a layer mask from so with that selection active what we need to do is make sure that we've got the top layer active so we click on that and then click down here on the new layer mask icon now when I do this the opposite of what we want is actually going to happen so watch this so we've loaded that selection into the layer mask but what's happened it's masked the opposite of what we actually wanted to mask so we just need to invert the layer mask here so click on the layer mask and press command I on a Mac on the keyboard or on a PC that we control I and that will just invert the layer mask. So there we go, that's the basic, <laughs> that's the basics of it done. However, it doesn't quite look right, um, mainly because the uh, the brightness between the sky and the foreground, it, it doesn't match up, it doesn't really make much sense. So the sky is much, much darker than what the uh, foreground is kind of suggesting. So you know, before we actually uh, fix that up, so I've got a couple of adjustments that we can do to uh, to fix that. What we also need to do is just, if we look over here, I'll zoom in, we can see the selection hasn't quite uh, captured that, um, you know, that edge between the foreground and the sky perfectly. So what we can do by selecting or by clicking on the layer mask and then up here, uh, clicking the select and mask uh, button, we can modify this selection um, directly in the layer mask. So I'll do that and what that gives us is the select and mask panel or window. Now what we can do is use the refine edge tool over here and just I usually find that even just with the default settings this can uh, you know do quite a good job. So all we're looking to do is take the uh, refine edge brush and brush it across the, uh, the edge here that kind of looks a bit weird and then as we do that you'll notice how it kind of you know Photoshop's figuring out what we actually want to uh, to be masking versus not masking so yeah we'll just run this brush all the way across the, uh, the edge here now you could um, you know you could sort of tweak and fine-tune the settings over here uh, depending on the image you're working on but I find that you know just the default settings often give us a really good uh, a really good um, you know edge <laughs> sorry just lost the words there okay so uh, okay let's uh, move across here see if there's any more I think that's pretty much most of it so now that I've done that I can click OK and now we don't have that kind of weird white sky coming from uh, in between those intricate branches on the horizon there or branches <laughs> blades of grass or whatever they are bushes uh, so let's zoom out again now we've 
got a pretty good mask there, so I think that'll do for now. If you wanted, you know, you can uh, use that refine edge to uh, to help bring in some of the uh, the churches. There's a cross just on the top of the roof here, which I haven't masked correctly, but you know, you can spend a bit more time with the refine edge and with the select and mask tools to really perfect your mask. But for the purpose of this demonstration, it's probably okay as it is. Now, getting back onto the subject of the balance between the brightness of the background and the foreground, the um, you know what we need to do basically is brighten the sky and darken the foreground. To um, yeah, it'll only be slight adjustments, but we're going to want to do that until we get that balance right. So let's start off with brightening the sky a little bit. So I'll click on the layer one, which is the sky, and I'm going to add a curves adjustment. And because I was uh, because I had the cursor on layer one there, when I added the curves adjustment layer, it, it's placed it directly above the sky. And because of that, it means that we can move the curve up and down and it's only affecting the sky because that's only uh, that's the only layer beneath that curves adjustment. So we can push the curve up a little bit, brighten the sky a bit. That'll probably do for now. And then what we can do is do the opposite, but with the uh, for the foreground. So let's add a curves adjustment now. Now, in order to make this curves adjustment only affect the foreground layer, which is directly beneath it, we need to turn this into a clipping mask. So click once on the curves adjustment, and then on a keyboard on the keyboard on a Mac, hold the Option key, or on a PC, hold Alt and then move the mouse cursor just in between the two layers there and you'll see when, when you have that, that the cursor changes to this square box with an arrow. Now when it's looking like that, just click the mouse once and you'll notice the curves adjustment has kind of nudged across to the side and it's got this little arrow and what that means is whatever we do in this curves adjustment now is only going to affect this layer and it's not going to affect anything else beneath it. So. With that said, let's uh, activate the curves adjustment and let's just uh, darken it a little bit. So that doesn't look too bad. Just a slight darkening. Maybe uh, maybe we can brighten the sky up just a little bit more so that we don't have to darken the foreground quite so much. Okay, and now that's looking uh, now that's looking pretty good. Now from this point on, because we've uh, sort of got that balance quite, um, yeah, so that it's looking kind of realistic, uh, we can then go on and process the image um, to completion. Just treating this now as one, um, yeah, as one layer, as one image. So just again, just tweaking the foreground and the background brightness just to uh, just to really hone it in and dial it in. In fact, I think that probably that probably looks quite good there. Now, yeah, like I said, from this point on, this is the sky blend pretty much done. Um, but we can, yeah, let's let's just for the sake of uh, completeness, let's uh, do a few more adjustments here to um, to uh, further process the image. So let's add some. Uh, let's add a curves adjustment here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brighten the foreground a little bit here with the brush and to do that I'm just going to create that brightening effect here with the uh, curve and I'm going to invert the layer mask so I click on the mask command or control I on the keyboard and now with the brush tool selected and with the white color selected in the foreground I can just sort of brush gently into this foreground here and you know just sort of highlight just um, you know just really sort of slight tweaks uh, to subtly increase the brightness there of the foreground and now uh, let's let's add a bit of contrast to the image so let's add another curves adjustment let's add an s curve Okay, that's looking pretty, pretty vibrant now and colourful. 
uh, but maybe the foreground has gone a little bit too dark so let's mask that so just with a black brush now just masking this contrast out of the foreground maybe just out of the uh, horizon here a little bit as well just as I'm looking at this some more I think maybe we need to uh, just tweak let's just tweak the sky brightness a little bit more so let's open up this first curves adjustment again and let's really brighten that sky up uh, okay maybe we can actually add another curves adjustment here and just do it some even even more okay so that's looking pretty good now but just for fun let's see if we can just add one more adjustment now looking at the image here we can see the sky is kind of brightest over here just behind the church so I've placed that Sun behind the church there, just to kind of show that's where the sunrise is uh, is happening. So let's just really uh, let's really sort of embellish that by adding a curves adjustment. Let's push the brightness up, and then let's invert the mask, Command or Control I, to uh, you know to hide this curve. And now with the brush tool, with a white color. Uh, uh, selected in the foreground let's just increase the brush size let's make a really large brush and on 100% opacity let's just dab once with the brush there to reveal this brightening layer just around that kind of brightest part you know this this brightest area in the shot and you'll see what the mask looks like over here so you know if I disable and then re-enable this you'll see the effect of that and you know it's just like a sort of a end of workflow kind of embellishment that I like to make uh, you can use that on any type of shot not just when you're swapping skies between images um, but yeah that probably wraps this video up I think so thank you for watching like I said at the top if you want to download the uh, the PSD file um, with the uh, the sky and the foreground uh, that we started this image with uh, that we started this tutorial with then just click the link in the uh, description below this video and you'll be able to download the PSD file and give this a go for yourself. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.